the nation's favourite celebrities. Oh, I like surprises. Paired up with an expert. I got excited then. <gasps> Whoopsie. And a classic car. Here we go. Wow. Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Am I on safari? The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no easy ride. Oh dear. Who will find a hidden gem? Yeah. Mm. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? I hate it. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. Double draft. Oh, no. Put your pedal to the metal. Spend, spend, spend. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. What a gas, eh? Taxi? <laughs> For two celebrities. But what's a London hackney cab doing driving through the Lancashire countryside, eh? Because it's transporting two firm friends, both actresses. How long have we been friends now? Uh, three years? Three, oh, three years? Three years. Gemma Oten and Samantha Rank. We are stuck with one another now. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma and Samantha are both showbiz pals. Particularly in our industry, you know, it's, it's such a feisty industry, so it's nice having an amazing girlfriend to, to kind of have your back. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Hug. Hug. Oh, we got, we got that seatbelt on. Gemma made her name appearing as Rachel Breckel in long-running soap Emmerdale and has also graced our screens in much-loved dramas like Holby City, while Samantha's appearances include a starring role in an iconic chocolate advert and also she's a writer, disability rights campaigner and broadcaster. Did you know what? I was thinking about you the other day because I, I was you looking... Joining? Yes, I was. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> I think some people are born to drive. I'm born to be chauffeured around by black cats. <laughs> this, is, it, this is your life, though, isn't it? It is. No, I mean, not literally. That's no, like I, don't a live, I don't live in a black cab. I know, <laughs> I know rent's expensive in London. Today, these two are being chauffeured in an Austin Fairway taxi cab. And accompanying the ladies on this journey of discovery are two antiques experts of note. Well, so we're going to go and pick up uh, Gemma and Sam, aren't we? Yeah. yeah I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Philip Searle and James Braxton. They're piloting a 1979 Mercedes SL. But it's a lovely car, it's a lovely day, isn't it? We're both northerners, but it's nice having someone like you in London just to be like, oh, I just need a bit of northern, yeah. northern banter. It, it's great fun having um, somebody who can make you laugh. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right, yeah. What, yeah. what a luxury. Yeah. It'll make what a luxury. It'll also be a nice change for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope the laughs continue as celebrities prepare to meet experts. Here they are. Look, look at these two. <laughs> Hello, hi. hi. Hi, how are you? Samantha. Hello, Samantha. Oh. They've already decided that James will pair with Samantha and Philip with Gemma. So, we're totally going to win because my dad was actually an antique too, so I... Yeah, and by the way, I only found out about this now. What was your dad? What was your dad? <laughs> what was your dad? He was an accountant. Well, what use is that? Oh, well, we'll just fiddle it with the numbers. Yeah! <laughs> you know what? No, that's not part of the game. <laughs> well said, James. Both teams are out of the starting gates, and Phil's coming out as a bit of a soap fiend. I got to tell you, I was an Emmerdale fan. Was she? Yeah, yeah. Well, I love the Yorkshire Dales. While Samantha and James are being ably ferried to their first shop by taxi driver Ray. This is Ray. Ray, give us a wave. Oh no, he can't. He needs, he can't take his hands off the wheel. Quite right, Ray. It's safety first on the road trip, and James is learning a bit more about Sam's passion for her work. I think with the you know disability element, we're, there's a lot more on-screen talent now, which is great. And you know we're, we're seeing so many amazing people with disabilities, but in such an authentic way. We're having our voices heard, yeah. which has been a long time coming. Yeah. Um, so it's a great time now. Yeah. It's a really great time, and I love being a campaigner. <laughs> so I, I feel really blessed. Let's hope that blessed feeling abides as both teams head for their very first shop of this trip. Each team of celebrity and expert will have £400 to spend. They start their journey today in Longridge, Lancashire, and are heading for auction in Crooklands, Cumbria. How's Gemma feeling about the challenge ahead? I'm a little bit scared because, obviously, Sam's just dropped the yeah. bomb that her dad was an antiques dealer. 
No, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. What we're gonna do, we've got 400 pounds to spend. Right. Right, and we're just gonna try and buy what you like. You know, let's try and spend, I don't know, if we can spend it all, that would be great. You see, I'd be inclined to just spend it all. Let's blow the lot if we can, shall we? Shall we? Are you a spender? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, Glad to hear it. Gemma and Philip are charging off into the lusciously named Berry Antiques. Well, Gemma, this is it. Been in the wow. shop before? No. This is amazing. I think I'll just unleash you. Go on, off you go. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where to start. This is amazing. Oh, my mum would have a field there. Oh, <laughs> See, immediately I go for the gnomes. I know, don't look at me like that. I'm sorry, OK? OK. I could have got the same dingle. You got stuck with me, though, love, so come on, let's crack on. Quite right, Gemma. You've certainly got the right attitude for this game. Oh, God, get a bit dizzy. Ah, this shop is crammed with stock. Space is clearly at a premium. Even the loo's brimming with antiques. Hey, please wash your hands, eh? Gemma? Yeah? Come into my office, please. Right. Take a seat. Oh! Look at... Take a seat. <laughs> Just... Oh, I hadn't thought of that, but, yeah, while you're at it... Might as well. I mean, I knew we were close, yeah. but I didn't realise we were at this stage in our relationship. For the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sitting comfortably. Time for Phil to impart a bit of antiques knowledge. This is a Windsor chair. Now, you don't have to be a genius to work out because they were sort of made in that part of the world. Oh. But what makes this potentially a good... We're well, not a good chair, is what it's made of. Right. OK? Because this here, I don't expect you to know this, but this is yew wood. Yeah. OK? And yew is really, really scarce. The wood of the long-lived yew tree has been used in Britain since ancient times. There are believed to be ten yew trees in this country which predate the 10th century. <laughs> right, but what I love... I love you. I love you. <laughs> How sweet! Lesson over, and they'd better browse on. Samantha and James, meanwhile, have driven to the town of Preston, where they're disembarking at Preston Antique Centre. A cavernous old place with plenty to see. Now, what's Sam spied? And let's have a look over in this corner because I think they've got a lot of jewellery and I've already spotted something that I really like. And what do you really like? I think this is beautiful. What? So this little chain mail yeah. handbag, that's silver, isn't it? Little evening bag, yeah. I think that's beautiful. S sort of mesh. Often m made on the continent, the French used to make a lot of mm -hmm. these, but they're brilliant. The mesh bag is a silver beauty. It sports a 1905 hallmark, the height of Edwardian elegance. But I could see myself actually using that now on a yeah, night out. Let's have a closer look, shall we? God, it's a good weight. Fill the weight of that. So it's marked silver. Can yes. you see the silver marks? Yeah. And it's got a maker's name, I think. Hold on. Tiffany's. Is it? No. Oh, <laughs> I got excited then. <laughs> I'm so No, gullible. I'm sorry. It good suits for a, you. For a girl's night out with my cocktails. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? Fit my lipstick in there. It's priced at £95. What could dealer Sue do? The only thing I could knock off is about 15, 15 pounds. We'll have a think about it. Well, that's one possible item for them. How are the other team getting along in Longridge? Looks like Gemma might have taken a shine to a little something. I like this. Really? Yeah. Why? I mean, actually, I do as well, but why do you like... Why? This is quirky and different but it actually feels like it might be something, okay. if that makes sense. <clears throat> well, it's 19th century, um, you can, and it's made out of papier-mâché. Right. It's a snuff box bearing the portrait of a rather serious-looking gent. £33 on the ticket. It doesn't remind you of me, does it? Ah, I think that's probably why I gravitated towards it, you know? It's probably why I liked it. Kids. <laughs> kids. But it's like a good show. I actually really like that. Um, it, it, it's about 18, 
somewhere I would think between about 1830 and 1860, possibly European. It seems to have the bona fides. Dealer Ellie's now in their sight. Stand by, Ellie. Ellie, 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 how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I think that's really quite nice. All right, OK, yeah. Got a little bit of damage here, which is yeah. unfortunate, but what could you do that for? Help us out, look, because... 25. Would you be averse to taking a twenty? Because it makes the it makes the math so much easier if you can it take does, twenty. It does, and you don't have to get change. And... Twenty would be fine. You sure? Yeah. Get that money out quick, 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 quick. Before a change of Yeah, oh put it in my pocket. <laughs> I love you. Really? I mean, I you... love you. Yeah. I love you. We all love you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a star. That's thank a you ever so much. That's okay. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you ever so much. Okay. Well done, you. <laughs> you too, honestly. <laughs> Samantha and James, meanwhile, are still browsing back in Preston. That's big. Sam's lovely. She's got an idea about what she's looking for, which is really useful. You're telling me, with the silver bag already earmarked, does anything else take their fancy? These are always lovely. They're nice, aren't they? What, what era would that be, then? Oh, probably late Victorian. This is rather nice, with the, with the poppies. 63, five, 65 pounds. Is Rings. that not bad? It's not bad, is it? It's fabulous. Very though. pretty. The ceramic washstand, jug and basin is by Staffordshire pottery maker Ridgeway. It's really pretty. I really like it. Is that a contender? Could be. Yeah? Why do you like it? When I look at that, you know, all the period dramas, so Downton Abbey, it just brings me back to Downton that. Downton Abbey! Abbey. It just reminds me of that. It's beautiful. It's a classic. Sold. Item. Sold. Sold. <laughs> just be careful. Come on. Careful. Come on. Come on. Come on, Mrs. Whatever. <laughs> Starring role in Downton. <laughs> Don't you drop that. I won't. You tell him, Sam. Time to catch up with dealer Sue. Sue? I think we've made our final decision. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so, and it's a good price, but I think we can maybe, maybe yeah. get... Get I it. think so. What, 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 yes. what, what could magically happen on that, Sue? That one has got 65. Uh, that can be 45 today. Today? It's for a special price. Is it price. just for me? It's just for you. Sue's already reduced the silver bag to £80, but can she drop the price further still? This one, I can't get hold of the owner of this. Uh, think out of the box here, Sue. What, 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 do, what do you think? I think he'd be keen to secure a deal. Yeah. 75, and that that's is the double what I'd normally knock off. Should we, go, should we go for both of them, then? Why not buy the bag? Yeah, we let's got the money. It. Hey, we're in Preston. Come on. I'm we're feeling lucky. <laughs> this is what people do, so we're going to buy them. We are. Have you got the cash? I've got the cash. A bold bit of buying to start their trip means that they have two lots for £120 all in. And they're still raring to go. Got, we got work to do. Okay, come, come on, let's go. On. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank really you. kind. Thanks. Very kind. Now, Gemma and Phil have driven the 20 miles onwards to Blackpool. Well, look at this. Here we are, Blackpool. Here we are. Did you used to come here as a child? There's two significant times that I can remember and going down this trip on a night time with all the Blackpool illuminations. Today, Blackpool remains a busy seaside resort, but our pair are here to learn about the town's heyday in the late Victorian period. Oh, look, there's the tower. How cool is that? And a tram. Oh! Hey, can we go on a tram? Well, I think we are going to go on a tram. You are. Blackpool's trams are an icon of the town. To learn more about them, they're meeting Blackpool Transport's Brian Lindop. Tell us, Brian, what was Blackpool like in the 1890s? What was going on? Oh, it was the most exciting time you can ever imagine in terms of dynamism, sheer inventiveness and entrepreneurialism. It was fabulous. Everything was happening. Nothing was impossible. We want an Eiffel Tower? Great, let's build an Eiffel Tower. Do you want a pier? <laughs> well, one's good, let's build three. The Winter Gardens came along, the Pleasure Beach, and, of course, we had the first electric street tramway in the British Isles. Are those trams still around today? Yeah, they are, actually. Do you want to come and see oh, them? Yes, please. Right, let's Absolutely. go. 
Blackpool's trams are still running today, making them not only our first electric trams, but also one of the oldest systems in the world. Gemma and Philip are going to see one of the vintage trams they still maintain in working order. Driver Dave can show them the ropes. Can I do it? Go on, do it. <laughs> Sorry. So, we're... <laughs> We release the brake and apply the power simultaneously, yeah. and we should move. All right? Yeah. <laughs> so, just nice and steady, Phil, while we're going around these points. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Do you know, you could be right. But since Gemma doesn't have a driver's licence, she can't operate the tram either. Oh, we're off, we're off. So, it's Phil's lucky day. Oh. You've done this before, Phil? You're driving a Blackpool tram, Phil. One, two. Three. He's a pro, isn't he? One, two. On the deck of the tram, thankfully now stationary, Brian can fill them in on how Blackpool's tram system developed. The tramway opened in 1885, and it was just a big success story, really, from, from then on. And the secret of the success was basically their simplicity. Uh, no clutch, no gearbox, no, uh, no, no petrol. Basically, it was simple, cheap, and very, very accessible. And did it coincide with, with the, the sort of the Blackpool boom, the summer seekers and the holidays? And I guess it helped out in that respect as well. It helped very much indeed. I mean, Blackpool was already heaving by that time. Yeah. The tramway came along, I suppose, just when it was needed. Right. So to have something that was a mass people mover was an absolutely wonderful invention. But by the 1930s, tram systems all over the country were losing favour as petrol fueled motor buses came into vogue. In 1933, a new general manager, Walter Luff, was tasked with closing Blackpool's tramway down. What he actually did was decide that the tramway was so special and so unique that it really needed to be saved. So he convinced the council to actually invest in a completely new fleet of luxury tram cars. Luff modernised Blackpool's tramway and in doing so, saved it. But by the middle of the 20th century, Blackpool's trams were again under threat. In line with most other municipalities around the country, Blackpool suffered very badly at the end of the Second World War in that its infrastructure was entirely worn out. In Blackpool's case, that was largely because the government requisitioned the engineering workshops to manufacture munitions, mm -hmm. and consequently we weren't manufacturing and we weren't making tram cars. Uh, so everything wore out. Um, and, of course, that was fatal for everywhere else, but not in Blackpool. We still had faith with our vision to keep our tram cars, and so the tramway infrastructure was again relayed and you know the tram cars were fully restored. By 1962 we were the only tramway operator left on the British mainland. Making Blackpools both the earliest and last first generation electric tram network in Britain. Today Brian and his colleagues still preserve the town's vintage trams in their workshop. So this is where the magic restoration happens? Yes, it all happens in here. Everything from putting a new set of tyres onto a set of wheels to restoring the bogies which they're mounted in and rebuilding a new underframe or building a completely new tram if we have to. We do it all in here. So Blackpool Transport are still working hard to keep the town's historic tram network and Walter Luff's great legacy alive today. Let's get back on the road, shall we? Can I do a horny thing? If you must. Whoops. <laughs> No, 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 we, we end on a horn. Come on. <laughs> She's at it again. Now, Sam and James, and Cabby Ray, of course, are travelling on to the resort of Lytham St Anne's a few miles down the coast from Blackpool. Blimey, Ray, your meter must be racking up a hefty fur. There's something <laughs> rather nice about black cabs, isn't there? There is. I mean, I would be lost without black cabs. Really? I mean, the fact that they are the only accessible form of transport, so all black cabs have to have wheelchair access. I I, I love black cabs. And also, black cabbies, they're a little bit like my my surrogate father. <laughs> they all look after me. Yeah, and the great thing is they have an opinion, don't they? They do! Oh, they do! <laughs> and they're Definitely. keen to share it. <laughs> I don't know. Ray's really kept his counsel so far, haven't you, Ray? Hmm? 
They still have one more shop to tackle today. Let's crack on. Yeah. Oh, this looks fun. Oh, it looks it? lovely. How cool is Here this place? Are. Really cool. They're at Verdi Antiques. What's that Sam spotted? Is that Margaret Thatcher? No, it's not. It's not? <laughs> are you sure? Well, it's got sideburns, <laughs> for goodness sake. Have... That Sam is a bust of the Austrian composer Schubert. <laughs> I knew that, really. She... I'm just, I'm, just, Come on. I'm just keeping you on your toes. Yeah. Uh, what do you say up here? You're daft apeth. <laughs> what? You're, da you're daft. You're daft git. And then we've got lots of mirrors and See, things. See, I really like Designed. this. Quadrant. I've got, actually got a lot of these plaques myself, and they're yeah. great for kitchens yeah. or, or like it is on the brick wall like it's this. Like... But I'm quite intrigued at the one in the middle. What, it, what is that? What, the think? one at the top? Yeah, it's yeah, unusual. It's fun, isn't it? And it's in and out board, isn't it? It's beautifully uh, written, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Lovely sign writing there. Um, I like ARP. That's Air Raid Patrol, isn't it? It is, yeah. Air Raid Precautions, James. The sign they've spotted certainly dates from the Second World War and seems to have served as an entry board in a local authority office building. But what would you use it for? Decoration. I like it, it's quirky. I think that's nice. Yeah? OK, price, price, price. me. Dealer David can help with that. Can you tell us a bit about this? It's come from a collector. I got it from a collector last week. W what's your price on it, David? That one is 125. 125? Yes. And is there movement on that price, David? I could do some movement for you, yes. Oh, movement. We like movement, movement, we like movement. C could that be just under 100? 95? I think that sounds I good, think good. good. I think it is. Do you, yeah. do you want to shake Sam's hand? Shake my hand. Of course. We're doing a deal. Watch your toes. <laughs> Watch your toes. Watch your toes. Deal. Deal. Sam, deal. <laughs> Great fun. Well, that's really good. They've landed another bang on target. But they've not finished yet. Oh, no. I quite like the mirror. It's quite kitsch, but I quite like it. Yeah, the, what are they called? They're bar barbola mirrors. Barbola. We, they used to be really trendy. When I started in the auction business... Yeah. Uh, ..Italian dealers used to buy these. But this is really nice. Barbola dressing table mirrors are typically moulded with small models of fruit or flowers. They were popular with the smart set in the 1930s to the 1950s. What do you think? If you're going to buy a Barbola mirror, this is the one. Yeah? I think it's really nice. I quite like that. Anyway, it's got no price tag on it. We'll have to ask David. Yeah. David, David! Yes, David. <laughs> David, we need your assistance sure. again. How can I your mirror. So your mirror. Your mirror, what do you reckon? That's £35, that one. £35. Pounds. £35. And can you knock off a fiver? Of course I can. Knock off a fiver. fiver. Look at you, see, the haggler. <laughs> hey, I'm coming out now. I think that's dealer. really good. I like it. £30? Pounds. Yeah. 30 and then 90? 95. 95. Show them the money. Show You've got the money. Provided James can dig out the funds, they've got the quirky Second World War signage and that Barbola mirror for £125 all in. Good work, chaps. And with that, they've come to the end of a delightfully summery first day on the road trip. Well, it's beautiful. I think we've come at the perfect time. It is. Well, well the sun's the shining. Sun's it's fabulous. We... Which way's Morton? I've absolutely no idea. You don't know? No, my direction skills are really bad. Have you not got Google Maps? No. Well, we'll see you all in the morning. Assuming you haven't gone astray, you two. Sleep tight, eh? Still there. <laughs> Phew. <-y. laughs> so, how did you get on yesterday? Oh, do you know, it was amazing. I fall in love with James. He's such a gentleman. We've got some goodies, so that's good. Good start. It's a lovely day, James, isn't it? Glorious. So, isn't it? England at its <sighs> finest. So, go on, what sort of day did you have then? I had a good day. He did. In the taxi, still driven by the redoubtable Cabby Ray, the girls are catching up on yesterday's hauls. Hey, Blackpool, how was that? I love Blackpool. It was amazing. What did you buy then, Jenny? Ready? Kiss me quick. Kiss me quick. Um, that's not an antique, though, is it, Gem? Did you actually buy any antiques, though, Gemma? Yeah. At all? Yeah, you did? Yeah. We've got um, one thing. One thing? Yeah. OK, that's fine. 
and their one item only cost them a paltry twenty pounds. Twenty pounds? Yes. <laughs> what did you did you just go to one of the machines where you, where you got a grubber and he picks up a teddy bear? Oh God, Was that it... would have been so much better. <laughs> I don't think I'm giving the game away if I tell you I've got £380 left. £380? That's a lot of money. It is. It is. So they better get a move on. I want to crack on. I, I, want, to, I want to get to our next destination I because, know. As, as we've discussed, I've got <laughs> a lot to do. You have got a lot to do. <laughs> Here we are. Time for the teams to have a sneak peek at each other's lots. Come on. What? We're excited. I want to. I want to see. Let's see yours first. Come on. Oh, Let's crack ask on. Ours first. Okay. I mean, we're, we're brilliant, aren't we? Here we are. Gemma, on. go on. Handle the goods. Gemma, two uh, hands. Uh, two hands. Okay. I mean, those used to be really saleable, didn't they? Yeah. Used they, to they, be. They, <laughs> I tell you what, an ensuite bathroom costs yes. about fifteen grand. You can buy that for forty. Forty-five pounds, actually, James. <laughs> hey, Gemma. Oh, God. Steady, steady. <laughs> I steady. can't handle this. Don't, don't leave don't, them don't, don't, don't leave it there, honestly. Leave them. Sam and James also bought the silver mesh bag and the Barbola mirror. They still have £155 left to play with. But what about Gemma and Philip's solitary item? Are you ready for this? Yeah, come on. Are you ready? Yeah. Ah, is it th this fella? Yeah, a little 19th century snuff box, papier mache. I must say, as images go, ugly old men don't rate high up. High up do you know why Je Gemma said to me, this reminds it's me of James. Did you? I don't wear a monocle. Did you? I think he's referring to the fact that you said he was an ugly man, James. <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to point it out Philip. too much. How but dare you? Gemma and Philip still have £380 to spend. We've got one item. Yeah. And you've got four, but I can only see three unless you well, really have Here comes the fourth. Really? What's that? Ray. The magic Ray. Ray. Oh, Ray. Here we are. Look at this. Look at this. I've got to <gasps> tell you. Ray, the bearer of the board. We haven't got a Ray, have we, Gemma? We haven't you... got a Ray at all. We, we want a Ray. We special. want a Ray. There's only one Ray to go around, and he's silent. Now, the sign. <laughs> what do you cool. reckon? I love That's that. cool, isn't it? Yeah. How did you pay for that? 95. Do you know, for a minute, I thought you said 95 pounds. Did you? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's good money, huh? I like it. Quality doesn't come cheap, you know. Wise words, James. Right. James. Hey, you're forgetting Ray. That's not right. He hasn't been paid and you've taken his taxi. God. James, what's happened to Ray? He's gone, I found him. I'm a bit worried about you driving. Why? Remember, you've got precious cargo on board and I'm not and talking I'm about the up. antiques. I'm very conscious of that. I'm going to drive Good. very so, carefully. I'm glad to hear it. And in the other car, Phil wants to learn a bit more about Gemma. I'm going to be serious now, cos life hasn't oh. always been a barrel of laughs for you, has it? Oh, well, that was seamless. Yeah, um, no, no, it's not. Today, she's a passionate campaigner for mental health awareness. But Gemma suffered severely from an eating disorder in her early years. You know, it's a miracle that I'm here today, and it's, it's because of my parents that that I am. And one of the things that I prided myself on is I don't like to have regrets. I feel sad for what I put my family in the heartache that I put them through. But I always say you can grow flowers where dirt used to be. Yeah. So if you can use the bad experiences and turn them into good, then that's all you can ask out of life. A very admirable attitude, Gemma. This morning, these two are driving towards the outskirts of the coastal town of Morecambe, where they're heading for their first shop of the day. This place looks massive, doesn't it? Well, good, because the pressure is on. We're full one down, aren't we, in the buying stage? Yes, and we've got 380 quid. So, with plenty of cash, but the clock ticking, they're off into GG Antiques. This place is huge. Gosh! Hmm. So, they're going to have to concentrate in one door, out the other door, in one door, out the other door. There you go. This is television. Look at that. At long last, it looks like Gemma might have spied something. Halton. Is that near the auction house? I like that a lot. I don't know why, but when, as any of what my reasoning... Been for a reason. Makes sense. Halton. Right, hang on. 
Perhaps dealer Steve can advise. Steve? Yeah? You got a minute, please, love? Yeah, sure, yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah, it's a good thing, that, Gemma, yeah. And I think it's a railway sign, that... It's not too far from the auction house. Has many people looked at it? Nobody's seen it. It's kind of been buried at the back of there. I love it. It's all right. But I don't know where Phil is, and we're getting a little bit tight on time. Yeah. So, what is your very, very best price on this? I'll tell you what, Gemma. I'll sell you that. 50 quid. It's all right. I promise you, it's all right. I'm just a little bit scared Don't about... Don't buy it, last. Deal. You'll do all right with it. Do you reckon? The tentative first solo purchase from Gemma. And meanwhile... <laughs> How good is wow! this? What an entrance! Oh, wow. Do you know what? I think that is absolutely lovely. Do you like it? I love it. There's no price tag on it. So let's go and have a word with the dealer. Yeah. See what we can do. Yeah? Yeah. Come on, D then. off we go. Yeah? No? What? <laughs> I, I, mean, I have just got something. What? That what? down there. Yeah? But I didn't ask you before I got it. So we're 50 quid down. What, that sign? Yeah. Oh, do because yeah, I was trying to be... No, I, I think that's... You bought that for 50 quid? Yeah. You don't no, need... no, listen, listen, no, listen. No, listen, you don't need me. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, no, that's good. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> you really don't need me. Yeah? Go, yeah? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Kids, I... Yes! Yes! No small praise, that from Phil, the king of off piste buys. And they're still browsing. Quite like that old cart up there. <clears throat> oh, crikey. Really? Oh, my giddy aunt. It's a donkey. Little donkey, little donkey on the dusty road. We can't leave him. You really want to buy that? Oh, can we? Is it, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Is it worth anything? Well, yeah, it is. I, I think it's a really cool thing. I like it. Are I you can... seriously entertaining this idea? Yeah, I am. I am. I'd buy that, but then I'd buy some very strange things sometimes. You said it, mate. <laughs> There's no ticket price on that miniature child's wheelbarrow or this large fiberglass donkey. Tell you Steve a bellow. Steve? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Come on, Z here. Um, we need to talk to you about. Good, isn't he? Donkey. Is it a mule or an ass or a donkey? I think it's an ass. You're standing at the right end, mate. You've got like a little galvanised child's um, wheelbarrow. Oh, it's cute, that, isn't it? Yeah. It is sweet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've kind of fallen in love with both of them, haven't we? Yeah. I'm right. in love with it. Are you? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a bad I love sign. It. Oh. I love it, yeah. Well, uh, if we said to you, what's the very, very best deal that you can do if we bought the two? And we'll either go yes or no. How's that sound? I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah. Don't cringe. 320 quid. And that's the absolute finish, is it? Yeah. It means we've got ten quid left if we go with this. You know, in for a penny, in for a donkey. I'm up for it if you are. Cheers, matey, thank you. So what we'll do... Brilliant. Thank you. You'll we'll, be all right with them. We'll put the donkey in at £200 and the wheelbarrow in at 120 quid. How's that sound? Yeah, whatever you think. Which leaves us a tenner. A tenner left, but do you know what? Yeah. Let's Money go welfare, I think this is so much fun. Thank you for helping us. My love, there it is. Thanks, Gemma. A done That's deal. Cool. And we're going to think of a name. I, do you know what I've got to think? What about James? I was going to say that! <laughs> <laughs> Great man to think alike. James. Absolutely, that's James. Good old James. Yeah. Samantha and the other James are still in the black taxi. I'm so worried about Ray. And James is practising the knowledge. Where are you off to, love? Where are you off to? Where are you off to? <laughs> are you at, at what? The West End? You're nowhere near, mate. You're a terrible cabbie. They're driving to the city of Lancaster this morning. I tell you what, you never guess who I had in the back. <laughs> you never guess. That, that's Samantha Rank. That's what? who you had. That's Samantha. Samantha Rank, there you go. Yeah. 
Never, no, sto I, never I, stopped talking. Couldn't get a word in. No, terrible, isn't she? Chatterbox. In the nicest possible way, Sam. So, Samantha, when did you get into this acting lark? Gosh, I've always been a bit of a drama queen. I've always loved singing and, and, and performing for other people. You know, I'm, I'm quite an extrovert, and so I think it's it's definitely been in my blood. I'm going to take you on a diversion. What do you mean? Where are we going? It's going to be really fun. It, you're going to love it. It's got it's got theatre in bundles. Sam and James are heading for the Lancaster Grand Theatre, where they're meeting Chairman Mike Hardy. Mike, I hear that the Lancaster Grand is one of the oldest theatres in the whole of the country. Well, it was built in 1781 and opened in 1782. And a couple of guys called Whitlock and um, Austin uh, had several theatres in this area that they were, they were running. And they decided that this city was ripe for having a theatre. And the concept of this theatre was born uh, through them. The theatre here in Lancaster attracted the cream of British theatrical talent. Amongst others, Charles Dickens and the celebrated actress Sarah Siddons brought plays here. But Sam and James are here to learn about another legend who graced the Grand's stage. One of the um, other figures that came here that's quite famous was a, a person called Joseph Grimaldi, uh, and he uh, made a major impact in the world of, of clowning. The clown is an entertainment icon that's been with us for generations, so it's easy to forget that this fun-loving character had to be invented. In the early 19th century, it was Joseph Grimaldi who first dreamt up the classic clown persona. And inside the auditorium, here's modern clown Martin. <laughs> Hello. Tell us a little bit more about Grimaldi. Yeah, he was um, from Italian descent, and his grandfather moved from Italy to the uh, to England in the 1730s. Uh, he, his grandfather was in acting, as was his father. And what was interesting was that his father involved him in uh, acting from the age of three. And apparently, there's um, a report that he um, swung his child round on a chain above his head and the, the chain broke and he ended up in the orchestra pit, which I think was a forerunner to some of the things that Grimaldi himself used to do when he grew up. Sadly, um, his father died, Grimaldi's father died when he was the age nine and he became the main breadwinner in the family um, after that. Gradually, he became more and more popular, more and more famous uh, and he um, started to bring a different approach to uh, pantomime as it was in those days. In the early 19th century, English pantomime was a type of performance incorporating dance, song and the harlequinade, which used stock characters to tell a light-hearted and amusing story. Joseph Grimaldi took the traditional character of the fool or clown and made it his own. Uh, he changed the, the costume he wore was much brighter. It was got um, stars and shapes on it, regular shapes. He also invented the thing which has become very famous since then. He was the first person to paint, he painted all his face white and, and his chest white, and he drew on his cheeks uh, triangles um, in bright colours, and he also painted the well-known classic clown's mouth. Where it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're smiling. And that became the iconic feature of what he left in his legacy. Grimaldi effectively invented the clown as we know him now and became famous doing it. The legacy he'd left in theatre in terms of the pantomime uh, and clowns, and it lives on to this very day. And that's the house, is it? And is that the house? Oh, Lordy. Just... Oh, oh no. Good. Right, OK. Shall we go? Do we want to put a bit of makeup on him? Yeah. Now, Martin and Sam will help James get into character. Right, let's make you up. Yes? Right, get that. And you want to dab it. OK, so we've got this. <laughs> come, come to me, my darling. Oh, God. And yes. we're dabbing. Oh, it's not very even. I'm not very good at this, am I? Hey, you gentle girl. <laughs> Stop attacking me. Right, a little bit more on the lips. There we go. 
Perfect. Was it? My work sure. here is done. Thanks. Don't hate then, me. Thanks. Come on then, boy. I hope right. it's good work. Right. Well, this is my first rehearsal. <laughs> roll up, roll up. It's Brackers the Clown. Right, OK, turn around, sir. Come here. That's great. Right. Uh, no, no, that way. That way. <laughs> Um, no, this way. Which? Yes, no, no. And you go like that. And then you go like that. Put <laughs> <laughs> the balls in the air and catch them. Okay, so you ready? Okay. Oh. 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 Juggle! <laughs> yes, very good, very good. Yeah, Absolutely. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> wow! wow. <laughs> yes! Thank you. Show James. I wouldn't give up a day job, old boy. Gemma and Philip are back on the road and en route to that absolutely crucial last stop. Oh, the tension. Happy? Yeah, yeah. No, I think so. I'm nervous. Is you no regret, Rianne? No, 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 no. It's all good. I, I have every faith in us, Phil. I think, I think we're going to nail it. They're travelling on to the village of Ingleton on the edge of the Pennines. Here, these two are visiting Lords, Antiques and Salvage for one last buying hurrah. Well, here we go. Let's do this. But just as they're getting familiar with the place, look who it is. Come on, James. No change. We can do this. We can do it. This is a sizeable place, so hopefully there's enough room for all four of them. Hello. Hello. How are you getting on? How are you getting on? Fancy meeting you uh, here. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> oh, I tell you, I mean, no, I mean, can't. It's tough, isn't it? It's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's choice, isn't it? It's yeah. like a supermarket. Too much. We've had a busy so morning. What's We've going had on? a very busy Clearly. By the, morning. Clearly. Yeah, they look a little smug. They do look a Don't they? Don't they look smug? I think it's poker face. I have no part of this. Poker face. I have no part of this. I'm not giving away anything. They look a bit flimsy. No, no, I don't believe them. Look up. The game is on. The teams are now shopping with vastly different budgets. Sam and James have a generous £155. I'm a bit anxious. I want it to be a good buy. I think we've got some good pieces, but we've got quite a bit of money to spend. And the shop is going to close in 50 minutes, which doesn't give us that much time. So I think we need to really kind of be quite sharpish and um, get... I'm going to get a jiggle on. While Gemma and Phil only have a measly £10 note left. Struggling here. I know we don't have to spend it, but like I said, a whole girl never gives change. The clock is ticking. I'm a little bit overwhelmed now. Don't worry. Something will become apparent. This is tricky, isn't it? Yeah, it is, actually. James, what exactly are we looking for? You wanted something really old, didn't you? Ancient. That is proper. <laughs> Come it was on. Weird. It was just it was eight quid. Come on. Oh. Con eight quid. Eight quid. Concentrate. Sorry. Please. What have you seen? Age. Age. Where's the age? You're looking in the mirror. <laughs> hey, cheeky. Hey. <laughs> but what's this? Oh, the, this little table here. Yeah. The gilt fellow. Do you like it? Yeah. And, you know, I could see our, our mirror going on there as well. Yeah, very. it's very glam, isn't, isn't it? it? It's glam. So if we look at the back here... Yes. This is uh, sort of 19th century Victorian. Mm hmm Yeah, so the little side or wine table does have a bit of age to it. So this would have been a fire screen mm -hmm. and it often in pairs and would have gone up on a pole with a tripod base. And this may well have been the base to it and they've just lost the cylindrical ah, shaft. I really think it's pretty. It's glittery, it's decorative, isn't it? And it's it's not too big, so someone could quite happily have that in their home as a side table. It'd be great. You know? It's rather fun, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. The price on the ticket is £78. See what the man might give yes. us. Yes. So I'll take right, it. You grab that, I'll You're... get hold of me. You're self-propelled. Go on, lead the way. Out we go. Dealer Carl's the man to assist. Hello. Hey, uh... Are you our man? Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> definitely today. Here you are, mate. The repurposed table. What, what's the best you could do that for? It needs to be good one. Sixty. Shall I oh. shake the man's hand? Yes, shake it for me. Go on, well done, Chief. Thank Thanks you, my darling. Lot. Sam and James have their final item with cash to spare. 
but Gemma and Phil are still determined to spend every last button. I tell you what, Gemma, look, I've got the horn now, look. <laughs> How cool is that? How much is that? <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. But give me here. You know I love a good horn. Yeah, well, absolutely. How much is it? Oh, 30, if it's 36 a grand. Too rich for their blood, sadly. There's a charity box here. I'll keep them talking. You nick the money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, perish the thought. The thing is, I don't want to put too much pressure on us, but I would like to... We'd like to, we'd like, we'd, we'd be nice to spend put... all our money, wouldn't it? Have you seen this? That looks like it could have a variety of uses. The reason I'm drawn to it is because I sing yeah. and I've got a steamer. Yeah. At home. It's a little inhaler pot for steaming the nasal cavities. Nice. If you've got a run in a show or you've got an audition or, like, pantomime absolutely kills my voice and you're feeling a bit tired vocally, you'll do some steaming with hot water the night before. What do you think? Well, it's French, isn't it? It's French, it's enamelled, and I would think, well, I'm certainly older than that and you might be. But how much is it? There's no price ticket on it. What would you pay for it? A tenner. Go on, then, go and do your worst. If you're happy, I'm happy. It belongs to dealer Breton. Good sir. Yes. Now, you know <laughs> that we've only got a tenner, don't you? Yes, I do. How much is that, please? Well, it is off my stand, is so I guess I'd be rude not to do it for a tenner. Thank you, my love. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Tenner it is. Star, right. You. I'm glad you found something. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We are... We go out home and hose. Done. Let's go and give the others a bit of stick, shall we? Absolutely. This way, they're down here. <laughs> right, see you at the auction. With that, it's the end of another jam-packed day on the road trip. Sweet dreams, everyone. But nothing can keep these trippers off the trail for long. And they're soon back on the road and ready for battle. No, it'll be a fun day. I am excited. No, actually, I'm feeling the pressure a little bit now. Why? Well, well because I've been giving it like, like I'm going to win all right from the beginning. It's been an eye opener, like learning so yeah, much of from like Phil and James. Of course. Well, because if you think about it, it's more on their shoulders than ours. Yeah. Because we can just go, well, well, we don't know. We're not experts, but they kind of are. Yeah. So that. <laughs> oh, kind of. They are. Oh yeah. They are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> not kind of. Well, me. we'll soon find out, <laughs> we'll won't we? Find... You will. On this road trip, both our teams began in Longridge, Lancashire, and are now headed for auction in Crooklands, Cumbria. Well, I think it could be our day today, Phil. Well, hello! Hello! Guys. hello. hello. We're here That's to win. my lovely lady. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Ready. Come on. Let's get inside then. Both our teams started this trip with £400. Gemma and Philip bought five lots with every last pound of their budget, half of which went on this beast. This is the donkey. Wow. They've made an ass of themselves, haven't they? I, they paid quite good money for this. While Samantha and James spent £305 and also have five lots in today's sale. This is a typical Braxton glitzy table. Yeah, but, Phil, is it a donkey? <laughs> no, it's a table. Do keep up. Here at 1818 Auctioneers, the sale room's filling up. Auctioneer Bill Nelson presides today. What does he make of their lot? James, the fiberglass donkey, he is absolutely awesome. He's wonderful. He's a talking point. Everyone loves James. The in and out board, I just think, is fantastic. It's quirky, it's interesting. Hopefully, it'll do very well. All very positive. Marvie. Are you ready for this? It's exciting. It is, it will be. First up, it's Samantha and James's silver mesh evening bag. Can it attract a sterling profit? At £50 and bid, at £50 at five. Well done, sir. Five, at £65 and bid. Keep going. At £65 and bid, at £65. At £65 and bid, Come on. £65 and selling, at £65. Five. Oh. <laughs> oh, bad luck, you two. <laughs> what happened there? I'm supposed That's to go on a bit further. Next, it's Gemma and Phil's nasal inhaler. 
Will it sniff out a profit? £10 unbeard, a 10, a 12, a £15 with me. With £15 pound profit? Oh, at least if you can't see it, they might not know, but it is. £15 at 15 at 15 at 15. <laughs> profit! £15 at 15 oh, pound, at 15 pound. I don't believe you'll, it. You'll regret it if you have an asthma attack. <laughs> £15 at 15 oh, pound. Nice. I'm going to sell yeah. at 15. A tidy little £5 win from the off. Well done. That was a maiden bit of 15. It's just a profit. Oh. 15. It's just a profit. It's that easy. Is. One for Sam and James now. Their Barbola mirror. How will it reflect on their shopping? It's very Holly Hollywood. But would you bid on it? At twelve pound unbid, at twelve, fifteen, right. eighteen, it's not 20, right. 20, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-eight. 30. 28. It's only one shirt. 28. At 28. At 28 pound and bid. At 28. At 28 pound and selling. At 28 pound. Oh, blast. It just misses its cost price. Did James make you buy that one? I, we both we, liked we it. We both liked it. We both we liked both it. We both liked it. Team effort. Team effort. Now, Gemma and Philip Snapbox. £20 bid at 20, at £20 and bid at 20, 22, 22, 5, 25, at £25 and bid at 25, 28, 30. It's only money, sir. At £30 and bid at 30. Yeah, it's only money, 30, but it's his money. At £30, pounds. At 30, pounds, at 30 pounds. On the market, I'm selling at £30. I think you'll find that's a profit. <laughs> And a profit like that is nothing to sneeze at. Ooh, I'm not impressed. <laughs> rack them and stack them, bingo. Rack them and stack them. The wine table made from a 19th century fire screen for Sam and James. Now, £30 to start me. Yes, £30. £30, surely. I think that's really cheap. So do I. Thank you, sir. At £30 and bid at 30 at Drop 30, the hammer. At Drop 30. the hammer. Drop the hammer. £30 and bid at 32 32 30 Drop the hammer. 5 35 Drop the hammer. 35 At 30 It's going down, I'm afraid. And selling at £35. Uh... And that lot goes up in flames. It's cheap, isn't Blaming it? Blaming you. Blame me. Blame him, Sam. Gemma and Phil love the Halton Railway sign. But will the buyers be on board? At 60, 60 pound and bid for Holt. Ten a profit. Interest. Another profit. At 60 pound and bid at 60, 65 and 70 at 75 and 80. Five, 85 pound and bid at 85. 85, 85. 85 Rackham and stack them. Five pound and bid at 85 at 85. And That's a lot of money. At 85 pound. Just a ticket. It's a local profit for local people. Do you remember that, 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 that um, that Have little, you bribed that someone? Comic, was it Look and Learn? There was a comic, wasn't there? Look and Learn. Look and Learn. Well, just look and learn. I don't like this. That's the luck at the sale room, Sam. But James and Sam have another chance to clean up some profit now with their jug and wash bowl. I've got a tenner bid, a tenner with me, a ten pound bid, a ten. <laughs> 12, oh, 12, 15, 18. All around us, all around 20 us. 20 with me on the internet. Keep, keep going, keep going. 25, 28, 30, <laughs> 32, 32 in the room at 32 keep pounds. Going, and James is having a fit. 30, <laughs> <at> 32 <laughs> pounds and selling at 32. We're keeping our powder dry. Very dry, apparently. <laughs> but Sam and James still have one more lot to turn this around. I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> Consider yourself on a first warning, James. The child's wheelbarrow that stole Philip's heart now. Is he next for the chop? <laughs> That's £70 and bid. It's £70 for the galvanised wheelbarrow. 75 In the room at 75 80 No. Where do we... 80 uh, you can't just have one bid, sir. Eighty pound and bid at eighty pound at eighty pound at eighty at eighty at eighty at eighty pound for down. the wheelbarrow at eighty pound and selling well, at eighty pound. Ah, is this the end of Gemma and Philip's winning streak? Well done. He did well with us. <laughs> for being spiteful, the pair of them. Sam unearthed the Second World War era sign. It's their last lot. And lot 1621 is the 1940s in our board. I'm show. I'm show. Showing here, sir. Showing here. Right, That's not going to help it too much, is it, really? It's a beautiful looking Well done, thing. James. Well done, James. And the board's very nice as well, James. Thank you. Are you blushing by now? 
It's 70, 75, and 80, 80 pound and hey, bead. Hey, it's at 80 working. pound and bead at 80 pound, 80 pound, 80 pound, 80 pound, 80 pound, 85, 90, 95, 100 <laughs> pound and bead at 100, at 100, at 100 pound and bead at 100. Come on, at guys. 100 pound, no, at one, I'll tell you what, I'll take a fiver. Yeah, yes. well I'm in a good mood. What, for the whole At thing? £5? Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no, sorry. 105. 105. <laughs> 105. We've been At robbed. 105. At £105 in selling. At 105. Well, some showmanship from Brackers earns a tidy win. Not having it, mate. Well done, well, you'll see. We've got we had a bit of intervention. It's the very final lot now. Showcased here by Porter, Andy. Thanks, Andy. It's the donkey. 180. Oh, stop. Swear. 180. 180. You're out. 190. No. 200. <laughs> 220. 240. Get in. 260. 280. 300. <laughs> 320. That feels good. No. 320. Finished. Now the telephone. Bingo. 320. 340. <laughs> 360. 380. 400. <laughs> 420. 440. Just look at their faces. I'm amazed, aren't you? 460. Sick. <laughs> 460. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. At 4, 460 six. on the telephone. At 460. Oh, yeah. At 460 pound. 470. <laughs> 470. 470. <laughs> 480 on the phone. 490. Oh, 490. It's only money. It's just so funny. <laughs> James, I always knew you'd come through. <laughs> 490. At least you've been one winner today, James. 500. <laughs> James, where did we go wrong? I don't know. 400. Thank you very much, anyway. At £490 and selling at 490 I not believe that. <laughs> well <done. laughs> not even funny. Very good, very good. Dobbin, sorry. James rubs to victory, an astonishing profit for the old nag. I can't believe I can't believe which has happened. I feel physically sick. I think it's all got a bit ugly in here, hasn't it? I think I think well, we should leave. It's a donkey. It's a donkey. Donkey. I tell you what, it's a prize really. Donkey. It is. It's, it's, it's not even a real donkey. It's a red rum of donkeys. That it really is, isn't it? Yeah. It, it says it all about life, though. You know, you, you don't do it for the win, you do it for the enjoyment and the fun. Well, Come on, we're going. <laughs> well, yeah, and uh, Go on, taxi for James. <laughs> Go on, where's my brakes? <laughs> right, let's go. Right, some maths first. Both the teams started with £400. After all some costs, Samantha and James made an unlucky loss of £87.70, and pence, leaving them with £312.30p. While Gemma and James galloped off with an astonishing profit of £174 exactly. They finish up with £574 on the nose. And all that profit goes to children in need. It's been a hard-fought game, but they're still all pals. Did you enjoy that experience? Yes. You did? I did. I did. It was good fun, wasn't it? It was, it was brilliant. It was good it fun. Was good. <laughs> Just the money side ruined it for me. It's so often the way, isn't it, James? Time to say ta-ta, ta-ta. What a lovely pair, aren't they? It's been good fun. <laughs> good fun. Good fun. We, we, love we love you. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Drive safely. Drive safely. Bye. Bye. What can I say? Well, congratulations. <laughs> I'm actually really chuffed for you. I mean, that was just pure class, wasn't it? And the boys are amazing. The boys. So oh, do you know what? Fun. Honestly, I feel like I've made like a friend in James. Friends for life. Oh, how sweet. Bon voyage, girls. Where's Ray? I'm worried about him. <laughs> <laughs>